Welcome to the George's FT TV YouTube channel. Today we'll discuss all things round five, our trades, how we went, and what we will do for trades this week, not just what we did before. So that should be all good. And yeah, go through a few high scoring players. It was an interesting week where a lot of, you know, we're patiently waiting for the top guys to throw in some bad scores so we can get them a bit cheaper. We saw that with Bont. If you don't have Bont, you'd be very happy. Uh, if you don't have a Tom Green, who a lot didn't start because of the buy, uh, you'd be happy. He'll be gettable soon. Uh, like an LDU and Dawson, I think you just don't touch either, especially Dawson with this forward time. If you held this long, you'd be spewing. Um, and then there's some players that are just not throwing in a bad one, and that's Merritt, Merritt's bad one is 108 this week, and then Luke Ryan just can't stop, won't stop, and that is... The most painful antipod at the moment. He is expensive, but I think a lot, pe a lot of people jumped on him in round one. So, not having him is very annoying. We have Whitfield instead, who needs to play out of his mind to score 105. So, whereas Ryan just got that intercepting game, which Whitfield doesn't. So, intercepting plus rebounding, uh, deadly combo. So, we need to get in Ryan at some point, and hopefully it's before his buy, so we... Maybe after his buy, I don't know. But that buy is pretty friendly, so we'll see how we go. But this week we scored 1,992 and season rank of 5k. It's okay. It's uh, Could be better, could be worse. Could have done some, some things differently. Trading Martin and Ryan has been pretty catastrophic, to be honest. But we did get Martin back. Uh, we... For two weeks in a row, we've carried, I think, over 300 or over 250k in the bank just because dealing with Wines and Winhager. Well, Winhager was a catastrophe, so I probably deserved the bad stuff that came with that trade. But I think the Wines one was annoying because he was doing all right before he did the hammy in Q4, missed the game, comes back, scores 110. So um, was probably plan planning to trade him some, at some point, but it did cost a boost, which is annoying. But regardless, uh, we brought in Nick Martin, Lloyd Meek, and Closey. So I was originally going to go Combin over Closey, and I watched the tape on both... I watched the tape on Graham and Closey, actually. Uh, Graham and Combin. And Combin played key position. So he played on Danaher and Hipwood, so I was a bit worried. Key position with no kick-ins. I think he did get one this game, but I think it was a bit lucky because no one was in the, the vicinity for about 30 metres, so he just took it. But uh, I looked at, I liked Graham's game a lot, and I ended up, I wasn't super keen on him, but I did watch tape, and I ended up bringing him in in fantasy. Uh, so I probably should have watched the tape and then spoke about him on the video last week, but... Yeah, learn that for next time for myself. But brought in Closey, and you'd be absolutely livid if you didn't go early on, clo on Closey and get a 124 from him. I'm pretty lucky that you got him in. So I think a lot of people did. His ownership's 44%. So two in every three people probably brought him in, accounting for a lot of the dead accounts. But you take it. And suppose some people would have looped. I did see someone loop with Sheasel and they bent Sheasel because of the closey. And why wouldn't you? 124, but gee, Sheasel's on fire this year. 130 average. I think he might be second to Gorn. So, been unbelievable this year. So, closey in for Howes. Now, Howes, I think, is a hold. Let's see how he did. He looked good and I thought he had yeah, break even 21. That's probably a hold with Salem out. Uh, we did trade because of his scores dropped when Salem came back into the team. So, yeah, a little bit annoying, but he looked fine. He had, had some bad clangers, like two or three bad clangers early, which which killed him. But otherwise, he looked good, was getting a bit of chip mark. So, uh, he'll be fine to sit on your bench for a bit. I think he can make another 80k. Brought in Nick Martin. I don't know if I regret this or not. It's too early to tell. We just got one, two, one thirties in the same system. Um, you know, with Redmond and, and McGrath playing, but I thought they used those two a lot more than usual to the eye. And the way they played was Martin played a bit higher up. He played half back, but when they were doing the chip mark in defense, Martin was kind of setting up a bit higher up the ground. So it wasn't getting involved in that. So it didn't 
have as many touches as would have liked, but the time on ground is still massive. I think it was 93 TOG this week, so that should help carry him to hopefully 105 plus with some ceiling games. So he's averaging 105 at the moment. Uh, plays the Crows. Hmm. But that's fine. I think he'll be fine. Uh, it was either him or Hayden Young. We went with Martin. So probably should have gone with Young, but time will tell. Brought in Lloyd Meek. I didn't watch a lot of this game, to be honest, but I figure he should average 95 plus based on past data. And Reeves, I believe... Yeah, I just looked look this up before. Reeves had three touches and was pulled from the game at half time. I read on Bigfooty he was on crutches. I've also heard he's potentially had a concussion. I don't know what's wrong with Reeves. I better to not speculate, but I did read. We definitely came from the ground at half time, so that probably helps Meek, obviously, for the time being. But Meek was good. Um, I can't really say because I didn't watch much of the game, but an 80 you take, and in a probably the worst matchup in the game against Wits. Bit I think Sherry. Is not. I'm not sure if that's hard or not. Sherry's been pretty good in the ruck, but I think his tap work's not the best. Sherry, but the way he competes in the ruck is pretty solid. So I'm quite happy we went the meek route. I think it was the right thing to do. Him or Marshall. If you went English, you'd be spewing. Uh, who do you want at English or Marshall? It's easy to say after one week. I do worry about English's ruck split week to week but it's quite unusual for him to score this bad didn't look like did he even sub ton last year I can't remember I don't even know if he went sub 90 so I think that's if you have English you just what's his break even you'd be so pissed off uh, he dropped 43k with the 200 break even Um, he's been scoring okay it's just, look, 120, 130, 120, 120, basically. And then he gets this 60 score, so... I think you hold, you back him in, because it's like, this looks like an outlier, but you do worry about the ruck split. But it was actually, it's actually been okay the past two weeks, so not sure. I think Rowan just looks like he's playing a bit better. Like, I probably favour Rowan. He's got eight of the last nine at Marvel, so I probably favour him, but... English can bounce back. Yeah, Meek, the break even of 17. So he's made 44k. He'll make a bit more. Reeves shouldn't be a threat for the time being if he's injured. So just back him in. And the fixture's not terrible. Like Grundy, I don't know if Grundy's that good. Like English is not that great of a ruck in the stoppages, apart from like, like good around the ground, but not like a. You don't fear English like you do a Gorn in the tap work. Like Marshall's not that good at tap work, but excellent every everywhere else. Soldo shouldn't be that difficult. Big O might be annoying, but Rob is whatever. Rob's okay in the uh, like bit like Rob, bit like Big O can compete pretty strongly. Like strong body in the stoppages. So I uh, will back me in. So those are our trades, and then who did we get rid of? Got rid of Grundy. Got rid of Howes. Got rid of. Uh, James Jordan. So that's fine. Those trades were fine. I guess ours out was a mistake, but what can you do? Um, defense. Who's our VC? Oh yeah, we captained the loop in Dacos, but just put it on bottom for now. But Chisel, unbelievable as usual, and Whitfield is. I regret this trade in a lot. Uh, he's D two for fantasy. I think he's just better for fantasy. So I think there's going to be a game where he just doesn't get 30 touches and he'll end up on 75. I can see it coming. Whereas Ryan is just going to go sleepwalk to 120 every week, 130 it looks like. So, um, I mean, not the worst pick, but I don't like it, to be honest. I did embrace you. We nearly traded him, and I'm glad we didn't because he's going to make a bit more money, but I think we're going to get rid of him next week, but we'll see. Go with break-evens and all that stuff. Williams was solid. Again, better. Like, he's... 
He's basically a primo in the first half and a rookie in the second half. Pretty much happens every week, but seems to be building. Yeah, the score's getting better. 70, 80, 90, basically. So it's getting better and better. Yeah, 50, 70, 80, 90. So hopefully 100 next week. Who knows? But uh, he looks good out there. No Adam Sard as well. So it's fine and closey. Unbelievable. Glad we have him. Uh, Bond and Green. Uh, Steel went to Green and destroyed him, basically. So taught him a lesson, but he should bounce back. Been in excellent form this year, apart from this week. Do wish I went Butters instead. Excuse me, but um, did not. And then Bond. Um, yeah, he's going to lose so much money. I uh, don't know what happened. I think Durham's kind of tagged him and... He just looked tired as well. They set him at full forward and dogs are just a mess. They'd be down on morale and and yeah, Bevo. What can I say about Bevo? I think all the fantasy coaches hate him. And um not not only that, what he's sort of just the stagnation of that list since twenty twenty one. It's been uh like barely or not made the finals when you've got Bont in his prime liber playing really well, all these great tools that he's got. Even like um like the, the he's just not getting the best out of that list and the subbing of Sanders was the like I listened to his press conference and I thought it was just a lot of didn't really give straight answers to like why was Dale not in the team why was Daniel in the twos and stuff like this and I guess maybe I can understand Daniel out of the team and I guess Dale's had a bit of an interrupted preseason um I think the issue is mostly with Sanders. Uh, like subbing him I don't think you, you talked him up so much and then you you sub him again and you can see how upset he was at being subbed he spit the dummy on the on the boundary line he's a guy that hasn't put a foot wrong he's done everything you asked for him and more in the preseason and then you sub him off knowing he can run out the game well and you have players like Baker getting multiple clangers. Like he could have eased. Like Gallagher was did nothing the whole game. I don't know. And even the the first time he subbed him, he sort of said it was pre-planned that they were going to sub him. And like, why would you pre-plan a sub? Like, look at the game. Like, be in the moment of the game, surely, and see like what is, what does the team need right now? You know, because that was when Sanders was starting to work into the game as well. So. I don't know, just like lack of flexibility there. Uh, but yeah, the damage you're doing to, I don't know if it's his confidence. Like Sanders will, will bounce back for sure. And there's no Libba this week, so I'm quite happy to field him. But I just don't think you should be doing that to Sanders. It's just, you really, like he doesn't deserve it. Like obviously he could be playing a little bit better, but like his first quarter was excellent. Second quarter didn't do much and then they subbed him in the third, so... Like, just back him in, Bevo, but you can't win with that dude. He'll do it. do anything that will disrupt whatever to piss people off. So, uh, yeah, just a, yeah, very disappointed for Sanders because he's so much... You can see he's, like, trying his guts out, but I don't know. What can you say about Bevo? Uh, Sarong, I think Sarong's had two difficult weeks against Port and George Hewitt tag. I think this week... Should be nice, uh, West Coast this week, off a win. Uh, Bulldogs, uh, Richmond, really nice two fixtures there, so that's pretty nice. Expecting a big one from Sarong, hopefully. Oh my god, Jack Steele's averaging 130, is he M1? Uh, let's have a quick look. I think he's M1. No, Real is Sarong and Sam Walsh, I guess. I probably can't really count Sam Walsh yet, but... Oh my god, he's back. I wasn't expecting this sort of level from him, but he's unbelievable. To play that well on an All-Australian, probably second or third in the brown line was Tom Green, and yeah, to just beat him like that was unreal. Uh, Nick Martin spoke about before, it's okay. Matt Kratz suspended... I mean, why do our low... It's all the low-owned players that are just getting suspended and injured and stuff. So, I mean, it's whatever. 
I think it's fine because it would have meant Sanders would have been on our bench. So I think I'm quite comfortable building Sanders this week against Saints with no Libba. That being said, who knows what Bevo will do with him. So we'll loop him regardless. And Matty Roberts will come back. He's 13 break even, so plenty more money to make. I think he's got 100k in him. So we'll probably get rid of him in like two or three weeks, maybe three. Uh, Gorn, excellent. Uh, I think the buy will do him wonders. So I'm actually quite happy he has a buy, to be honest. Oh, he has Richmond next week, the week after. He scored 170 on them. Uh, Flanders, excellent. Powell, fantastic. Poor ratio for DT to SC, but yeah, he's getting those uncontested marks and those contested handballs and stuff, so he looks fine. Harley Reid, 108, you're happy with. Dempsey, he just keeps dropping all these marks, but... Starts in the first quarter forward, and then as the game goes on, he starts moving up the ground a bit more. He definitely scores better when he's on the wing. Still good, like high tog and, and all that. So happy to keep fielding. Obviously, 56 is not ideal, but if it's any week to do it. It's in a week where it drops off, so that's that's all good. So he's made about 80k for us, which is fine. I think it got us an 80 last week, so... Uh, paying 200 was whatever for him, but I'm not upset. I'll just keep fielding him. Caddy is probably gone next week, but he's been a great rook. So thank you, Caddy. And then Sam Darcy. I think we just keep fielding this, although I don't know how how long he can keep up this form, like 150, 80, 80. So kind of want to get him off the field eventually, but for now he's playing unbelievably well. So keep him in the team. We'll get Heaney back, and we're still carrying... Uh, Sexton so uh, let's look at some targets just quickly so Sam Walsh um, I will sit out of Sam Walsh very stubborn with durability and I don't know if he's going to have further back issues throughout the year so I'm just going to sit out um, yeah he looks really good though Luke Ryan, one of his, yeah, I just, we just wait for the bad game. His record on the equals isn't great, but I don't think that means a whole lot. Hopefully he gets nothing early and the game's over by quarter time so he doesn't get much scaling, but he's a, yeah, 135. Jesus Christ, he's just killing it at the moment. Rails, now the Gold Coast mids, if you look at their fixture, this one is pretty sneaky, sneaky but... Look at this, Sydney, I mean, it's all right. West Coast, Brisbane, North. Probably like yeah, the West Coast, North combination. Both midfields are not, not great at the moment, but I guess Yo and Kelly played really good today, but uh, yeah, North are pretty down in the midfield at the moment. Not seeing much from LDU. Power's okay, and then Wardlaw's still good too, but they're nowhere near the, the top end mids at the moment. So Geelong's midfield's okay. Just go on. I think Bose and Bruin have been good, but your danger will be back. But it's not like the most unbelievable midfield out there. So, yeah, this uh, these two fixtures here, even Brisbane, I don't think are that restrictive, but that was last year anyway. So, really nice fixture for him coming up. So, if you want an Anderson, Rao, or Took, certainly not against that. Uh, I think you can still grab Steel. He's going up and up and up, but he's getting kind of expensive now. Sarong will come down a bit. Sarong will be a great target next week if you want him for the Richmond game. Maybe two weeks now that he's thrown a 90 and 110 in there. Well, Flanders averaging 120. Neil, I'm just happy to skip this year due to age. And with this Gold Coast, like with Flanders out of the rotation, it just bumps them all up a little bit. The Gold Coast mids. And Anderson's got that more outside game. Two has the outside game too, but more so over Rao. I think he's a solid option, but this is like like Dewey game against a really sorry Hawthorne. It's the ultimate fixture for him, so like it's not gonna get any better than that apart from maybe Richmond, who they've already played. Richmond round twenty four. Oh he's got West Coast and Richmond. Two West Coast games, geez. Um I think he's a solid option. Be happy if I had Anderson, Rao, Took. 
probably skip Rosie because the early the easy fixtures have pretty much gone. Like West Coast Richmond. Oh, they're still not too bad. Yeah, Hawthorne North up here. I think Rosie's okay. I think it's I'm not sure on Rosie though. Can have those bad disposal games. Horn Francis kicked that nice goal. I think Andy, you just don't touch this year. He was really, really good though. And that goal at the end. Laird is uh don't touch Laird. Yeah, no reason to bring in Crouch now. If you started him, it's like he's made a little bit of money keeping rookies off. It's been okay, but not been like outstanding. It was looking that way early though. Stewart, what's his break even? 142. So he's coming down a bit. What did he score? 108. Just go on okay, Stewart. 104 average. Probably take Stewart over Whitfield though. Ness, I think we'll just. Yeah, 86 average. I think I'm not too fussed with Ness. I think it's this uh, post Marvel, post. What's it called? Post buy. I'm happy to grab him as like a seventh defender or something, but you'd be happy with Ness. Free run average, who's hot at the moment. Shea is gone off, so what's his break even? Uh, I think I'll just leave Shea for now. Played West Coast this week, but he's been in good form. 119, 130, 129. They said they want him more in the midfield. I do feel he'll drop a bad one at some point. So I think I'll just sit out on Shea, but he's looking pretty good. Merritt is the one we want because I've been highlighting this fixture for a while now. I think we'll we'll skip Merritt this week, 130 break even. And then Anzac Day, West Coast, North Richmond, Giants as well. Like that is... You got, I got, got to get him in. Like I know you got to pay, but I just want him. Yo's been excellent. Obviously had probably you know lining up on Dow and and Jack Graham today. Not going to get any easier than that. But uh, he's looked good. Tog's a bit low, but uh, yeah, he's looked good this year. Few goals. One was a little bit fortunate, but but it is. Uh, Hayden Young. I think we're going to grab Hayden Young this week. Uh, just watching him, just really impressed with him. And if you look at his scores, he had four games in the midfield above 110 last year, and he's just had another three above 110. So yeah, he's playing really, really well. And I think he's like... Uh, I think he's 106 to like 111 range. I'm not sure, but... Look, there's quite a few targets to go for. I think the midfield, you got to pay. Like, as well... Uh, saying before not going to worry about the forwards at the moment there's Zorko there but we're just going to let that be I think you want Rao, you want Butters, you want Merrick you want Sarong, you want Steel. you probably want, still want Green probably Gold Coast mids like Bont you want there's just so many good mids like even Petrarca what's his average like 112 I wouldn't worry about that I think that'll most likely most likely end up as a 120 Plus, and then, yeah, Richmond on the return game. Break even's 156, so you can wait, but that game against Richmond, he should destroy them. So, uh, trades for this week Carroll, 46 break even. Jai Clark, 74. So, Jai Clark being a failed rookie is what it is. And then Carroll. So, we can go Graham. So I think everyone will bring him in this week. And then we could actually go Merit. I think because of break-evens, I think we'll go... Uh, I think we'll go Hayden Young. I'm not sure. We'll be one of those two for sure. I think that's all we need to do this week. Uh, no need to bring in a biggie new in just yet. So no boost, but I think we'll plan to boost next week. We'll get rid of Sexton and D'Ambrosio. Or I think Sexton, Cadman, D'Ambrosio for the two North boys, Biggie and maybe Jury. Or maybe McAuliffe if 
uh, Jury doesn't do well, but you can bring in those two. I think Jury looked all right, took a lot of marks, scored a 40 and a 90 in the VFL, something like that. Did go overseas in the preseason, which is always a good sign. Shows sign of wanting to improve and uh, looked miles better today than he ever did last year. So that's what we'll look at this week. So still got just the two boosts. One we'll use next week, but I think this week we can probably loop uh, Cadman and Darcy. We'll probably hold Sexton. So Sexton will go next week. I don't know why we're still holding him. Would have been nice to have a money maker there, but he's been a good loop for us. Just looping forward rookies, but uh, that's the team for now. I think we'll go Hayden Young and um, uh, we can loop Sanders. We're not going to loop uh, Wilson. He'll just not field, but I think Sanders with no liver should bounce back all going well, but you never know with that. With their coach so i mean that's the team uh no ryan and and yo in defense actually hurting a bit but more so ryan but uh, hopefully some regression from those would be nice midfield i guess no butters is annoying because he's quite highly owned and then that's pretty much it like i don't think we're really death riding that um many other players i guess Tuke may be a little bit too but uh that's it but uh, that's it from me. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.